can't take care of one little old lady. Damn! You should have a martini. You should, better yet, give a tired old widow a break. Shirley McLean. With all due respect, why me? Because I like you, Douglas. Please hold for the president. Nicholas Cage. I don't get it myself. One day she calls me, says she can't live without you. Next day she's calling almost in tears. You know, maybe you two have some kind of sicko thing going on. No, 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 sir, no, sir. I... Guarding Tess. Guarding Tess. Uh, this is the most random review of the stream, like I said. This movie was not even on my radar. This film was released in 1994, uh, directed by somebody named Hugh Wilson, a uh, director I've never heard of. Uh, apparently, this guy also directed uh, the original Police Academy, uh, the first Wives Club, and also Dudley Do Right, starring Brendan Fraser. So an interesting little track record there as a director. Uh, this movie, like I said, was not on my radar, but a friend of mine who I've befriended since coming down to Tennessee uh, said this was one of her favorite movies. So I'm like, ah, and even lent me the DVD of it. So I decided to watch it and check it out for myself. So what are my thoughts on this uh, random mystery movie regarding Tess? Well, let's read the synopsis. Doug is a Secret Service agent who has just completed his stint in charge protecting Tess Carlisle, the widow of a former U.S. president, excuse me, and a close personal friend of the current president. He finds that she has requested that he not be rotated, but instead return to be her permanent detail. Doug is crushed. And after returning, once offered detail as she is very difficult to guard and makes her crazy detail with her whims and demands. So guarding Tess is actually a comedy with some dramatic elements. Uh, when starring this movie, as I had no anticipation for this film, I didn't have any expectations or anything. The movie started off, it was kind of a slow start. Uh, the comedy wasn't really landing for me. Uh, Shirley McLean plays the character Tess, uh, who is being protected by the Secret Service. She's a widower. Uh, uh, her husband, who was a former president, has died, but she is still on the protection list. And she is so cranky and almost uh, unlikable. She almost acts like a Karen in some parts of the movie with some of her ridiculous demands. The point where I was like, "Why do we have to put up with this character? It is, uh, it is, uh, uh, it, it can get really annoying at times." And some of the physical comedy wasn't really landing for me personally. But it's one of those cases where you don't judge a book by its cover because the more this movie went on, the more I was engaged by it. Uh, the movie got funnier the more ridiculous the storylines get. The more. Uh, Doug, Nicolas Cage's character, is desperately trying to get out of this situation by purposefully being a bad agent. And the constant clashes with him and the Tess character. It started to get really funny. Uh, there are some parts of the movie where Nicolas Cage can go cage. He's a little bit restrained in this movie, but when he does show the cage, it's pretty awesome. Uh, there's an interrogation scene near the end of the movie where he goes crazy and he shoots a man in the toe. That's all I'm going to say without spoiling it. And it's a one of those amazing Nicolas Cage moments that nobody talks about. And I really enjoyed that. I was annoyed at the test character at first, but the more you learn about her character and what she's going through and what she's currently going through that she doesn't really want people to know about, uh, you start to feel more sympathetic toward the character. And I thought Shirley MacLaine, there were some parts of the movie where she was toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nicolas Cage, and she was pretty funny at times. Uh, the chemistry that these two actors have are very genuine, especially in the second half of the movie. And what could be an easy negative, where a thing that annoys me in comedies is where the third act gets ridiculously dramatic. And... There's like a contrived way of wrapping up the story that annoys me in other comedies, but it doesn't in this movie because I actually thought the relationship by the end of the movie was genuine enough to where I actually was more invested in the storyline when it went a more dramatic route 
in the third act. So that's actually a rarity. Uh, I thought this was an enjoyable movie. Uh, nothing spectacular or anything. Uh, but for a one-time watch, I think the film is pretty solid. I think the casting of Nicolas Cage and Shirley MacLaine definitely makes this movie work. I'll definitely watch anything where Nicolas Cage goes crazy. And even though this is not his most memorable, it still has its moments. And I do think it's a solid movie for what it's going for. So at the end of the day, I gave the film a three and a half out of five on Letterboxd. And uh, it's struggling to load on me. Uh, 67 out of 100 on my 100 point scale. All right, looks like we got one more comment. Uh, that's Oscar winning actor Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Who would have thought after Dudley Do Right? Yeah, I've, not, I, I've never actually seen that movie uh, because I wasn't really that familiar with it. I did see the Nostalgia Critic review of Dudley Do Right recently. And it sounds like one of those you either love it or hate it type movies because of the amount of physical comedy in that movie. But it's really cool that Brendan Fraser. It has an Oscar win now. Another comment here. This is Cage's normal period where he was doing light comedies like this and Honeymoon in Vegas, and it could happen to you. Now, I have heard of Honeymoon in Vegas, but I haven't seen it. I don't know if I'd say it was fully a normal period because in the late 80s did Vampire's Kiss, and he was very wacky in that movie. That's all I'll say there, but... Uh, there were still some moments in guarding tests where you get to see the true cage.